pill. It's the most common form of contraception, but lots of us take it for other reasons, like to get better skin, reduce the flow of your period, or helping with cramps during that time of the month. It was introduced nearly 50 years ago, and now up to 80% of Australian women have used it at least once. But what exactly does it do to the body, and should we avoid taking it at all if possible? But first, let's talk about the menstrual cycle. There are four key players in the monthly cycle, gonadotropin releasing hormone, luteinizing hormone, progesterone and oestrogen. The cycle begins with menstruation when a layer from the endometrium is shed. Once this happens, gonadotropin releasing hormone is released from the brain which makes luteinizing hormone be released from a different part of the brain. These hormones affect the ovaries where an ovum or an egg develops and the ovaries release oestrogen and progesterone. Oestrogen and progesterone stop the release of luteinizing hormone as well as making the lining of the endometrium thicker. As the levels of progesterone tails off, the lining starts shedding and you get your period. The cycle starts all over again. There are two main types of oral contraceptives on the market, the combined pill and the progesterone only, or the mini pill. The combined pill has oestrogen, usually in the form of ethanol estradiol and a progesterone, and they stop the release of the hormones that control an egg from developing. These hormones also make the environment of the uterus not ideal for an egg to implant and develop into a baby. The combined pill usually has seven inactive or sugar pills, which lets your body get rid of that endometrial lining, which is why you get a light period during these pills. The mini pill just makes the cervix a not very nice place to be mm. if you're a sperm. So, what are the risks? Well, taking the pill increases your risk of getting breast cancer, but by a teeny tiny bit. Like one person out of 20,000 people would get breast cancer because of taking the pill. But breast cancers of people who have taken the pill tend to be easier to treat and control. It can also increase your risk of getting a cardiovascular disease like stroke, but again, only by a tiny bit. Getting pregnant actually increases your risk of these diseases even more than taking the pill. On the other hand, taking the pill decreases your chance of getting ovarian cancer. All in all, the pill does lots of good things. It helps reduce anemia, regulates and reduces the flow of periods, stops pregnancy, and most importantly, helps many women feel in control of their bodies. Although there are some risks involved, they can vary depending from person to person on existing conditions, and it's best to have a chat to your doctor about the risks.